Welcome to Beaver. Welcome to Beaver Memorial Church. Welcome to Beaver Memorial. Welcome to Beaver Memorial. Welcome to Beaver Memorial. Hello, Beaver Memorial. We're the Hausmans. I'm Mark. I'm Kay. I'm May. I'm Emily. And this is Ashton. See y'all soon. Good morning and welcome to Beaver Memorial United Methodist Church. We're so glad that you could join us today. Welcome to Beaver Memorial UMC. My name is Pastor Leah Williams and I want to thank you for being with us today. You could have chosen to be anywhere else in the world, but you decided to worship with us at Beaver. So thank you so much. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for your love, your grace, your Holy Spirit. Guide each and every one of us as we work together to do all the good we can by all the means we can, in all the ways we can, in all the places we can, at all the times we can, to all the people we can, as long as we can. Amen.
verses 43 through 47, which reads, All came upon everyone, because many wonders and signs were being done by the apostles. All who believed were together, had all things in common, they would sell the possessions and goods and distribute the proceeds to all as any had need. Day by day, as they spent much time together in the temple, they broke bread at home and ate their food with glad and generous hearts, praising God and having the good will of all the people. And day by day, the Lord added to the number of those who were being saved. The title of today's sermon is called Letter to the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Bills are piling up. My baby needs more diapers. Stockpile ran short. And the kids are super hyper. Six feet away, ten feet apart. So sorry, honey. No more trips to Walmart. Yes, troubles don't last always. But the people of today are wondering when will things be okay. Filter through a mask, experts say we are protecting our lives. However, right now, this airborne pandemic seems to be winning the fight. In order to calm our souls, we are encouraged to Breathe in and to breathe out. But that too seems to bring in some doubt. Lord, pour upon us a solution. Please show us that you care. Fill us with your love, Lord. Fill us with some air. And suddenly, from heaven, there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind. Holy Spirit, is that you? Are you the same Holy Spirit from way back in the day? The life-giving rock that Peter proclaimed will be poured upon all flesh causing humankind to see visions and to have dreams? Is it you, Holy Spirit, the one who filled homes and fell upon the people and prompting them to speak in tongues? Oh, I sure hope it's you, Holy Spirit. Because with all that's happening around us, it is easy to wonder if this concept this idea of the Holy Spirit has actually gone under. Now in today's scriptures, the book of Acts talks about the disciples and the disciples and the people of the early church sound a lot like you and I. Our brothers and sisters of the first century were waiting and wondering when would the Lord restore the kingdom to Israel. They were nervous because no one knew the times nor seasons when Jesus' promise of restoration, the new covenant, will be fulfilled. And although these early saints had asked the Lord this question many times before, like us, 
they yearn for answers because Jesus was leaving them. He was ascending on to heaven, leaving them alone to wonder, to sit, and to pray. Today, in the 21st century, we are waiting and wondering for the restoration of our own activities of daily life. In some ways, it also seems as if we have been left alone to wonder, to sit, and to pray. When will it be? May 8th, May 11th, June 1st? Yes, the promises and projected dates of reopening have provided a thin glimpse of hope. But today, I want to remind us, us all of a steadfast promise that would always bring real life-giving, life-sustaining, and life-maintaining hope. And that, my brothers and sisters, is the promise of the power of the Holy Spirit. Before ascending to heaven, Jesus left our early brothers and sisters with this promise, that they shall receive power when the Holy Spirit fell upon them. And guess what? That promise still applies to us today. The power, the ruha, which Hebrew means the wind or breath, continues to empower us to witness throughout the ends of the earth. Putting things into motion and kicking our lives back into gear. This promise of the Holy Spirit, the promise of the Lord, brings, breathes life into all God's creation, enabling us all to come alive and to breathe. In this passage, it is said that all who believed were together, had things in common, shared goods with those in need, broke bread at home, and praised God. These folks were filled with the Spirit. And like a rush of violent wind, a pandemic of the Holy Spirit swept through the community, touching the lives of everyone who believed. Finally, an airborne pandemic that restores and does not restrict. A pandemic that heals and not kills. A pandemic that enhances our lives and allows us to The book of Acts and today's scripture is about the absolute reliability of God's work and the empowerment of the Holy Spirit. Brothers and sisters, don't you think it's time for us to breathe in some new fresh air? Isn't it time for us to allow the breath of the Holy Spirit, the wind, the ruin, to fall fresh upon us, filling our homes with love and new life? This 
God-given gift and source of all power is given to each and every one of us. So let us all open up this gift. Let us all accept this promise. And let us all breathe. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, Hear what gracious words our Savior Christ says unto all who truly turn to him. Come unto me, all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Let us now attend to the words of the institution of the Holy Supper as they are delivered by the Apostle Paul. I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus on the same night in which he was betrayed took bread, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to his disciples and said, This is my body which is broken for you. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup and said, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat the bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. And now in his name I take these elements of bread and wine to be set apart by prayer and thanksgiving to the holy use for which he has appointed them. Please join with me. Let us break bread together on our knees. Let us break bread together on our knees. When I fall on my knees with my face to the rising sun, O oh, Lord, have mercy on me. And now, ministering in Christ's name, we take these elements of bread and wine to be set apart by prayer. And may the Lord Jesus Christ bless and sanctify with your word and Holy Spirit these thine own gifts of bread and wine. And now if you will take the cup, those of you that have the little cups, and just pull back the cellophane, not the whole thing. Because if you pull back the cellophane, you will find the little communion bread there. It is like a wafer. And then when it comes time for the, the juice, then you pull the tinfoil back and you'll be able to receive the Jews at that time. And so now take the bread that has been blessed and broken. Take and eat in remembrance of Jesus Christ. Also take the cup and give thanks for this miraculous gift that we have been given. Amen. Let us pray together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. This ends the communion part of our service. Now, may the love of God, the peace, and the power of the Holy Spirit be with you for now and forever. Have a great week and go in peace.